Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your caster for the match, Crit Chronic War Catalyst here, and this is the round of 32. This will be a match between Planter Technologies Prime and NVIDIA here in the After Hours Gaming League playoffs of the 2015 season. And let's get right into this pick ban phase, because we did certainly have an interesting pick ban phase. But actually, before we jump right into it, I do want to take an extra second to introduce our two teams. On the blue side, as I said, it's going to be Planter Technologies Prime, that is a data management and security company. They are going to be playing for Child's Play. It's a fantastic charity that brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers the joy of gaming to help them reconnect. I was actually speaking just yesterday with uh, one of my cousins uh, who works at a uh, children's hospital for children who go through cancer and you know I was talking with her about this exact charity and the work that they do to actually help those kids not just only sit in a bed and flip through channels on TV to actually have something that engages their mind and brings them a little joy when they're in that horrid situation I mean that helps them quite a bit so fantastic to see uh, that charity being played for here and of course on the red side we have NVIDIA. Uh, they are the company that made the lovely GPU I'm running on this computer so we can all thank them for allowing me to broadcast this beautiful video <laughs> today. Um, they're gonna be playing for Game Changer Charity. Uh, what that does is it uses proceeds from the resale of donated materials uh, to financially support children and families who are suffering from cancer. Uh, it also provides corporations that are in the uh, tech field with alternatives to managing uh, excess. Excuse me here. Sorry about that. I, I thought for a second I was reading the wrong charity for them. No, no, that is the correct charity. <laughs> they uh, manage uh, excess electronics and inventory. So uh, they help reduce a lot of waste that goes on just in industry. But they additionally uh, use the proceeds from that to try and uh, help children who are in those poor situations where they unfortunately ended up with cancer early on in their life. So fantastic charity on both sides here, both working to help those kids who are in need. So very nice. I, why I love casting for the uh, AHGL, I mean, we're going to be happy with whichever team wins here today because I want to see both those charities go forward. But without any further ado, let's get right into this pick ban phase here. Uh, as we see, looking at the bans first, we want to talk about, of course, the Zareth, LeBlanc, and Annie bans. Insane target bans. All in target bans here. Going against the mid laner, Pax and Optimum. Um, it seems like he was able to get Ari, which uh, isn't something I... During my scouting, I saw him play very predominantly, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if how he's able to perform on that champion. Of course, Ari is quite strong, but uh, I was expecting to see more of a Syndra or Kastan, but with their recent changes, I can understand how Ari might be a bit more safer of a pick, but we'll just see how comfortable uh, he is on that champion and how, what his mechanical proficiency is on Ari today, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that mid lane to see how that turns out because they certainly took the time to ban that mid lane out multiple layers deep so um, but speaking for the blue side now we of course have uh, Vi very strong now with the nerf to uh, Cinderholt coming out she can actually go back to that warrior enchantment and really bring some solid DPS in the early stages have really strong engage to uh, start off a fight so to see her banned out right now uh, is actually a very timely ban given the recent changes, I think. So that's going to be something we see more and more frequently going forward. Uh, but the J4, uh, also similar vein, very strong champion given the current uh, state, stage of the patch that the game is in right now. But also that is, of course, a bit of a targeted ban uh, at Teapot here. Certainly has been known to break out the J4, and I was very pleased to see the Renekton ban. Oh, I've missed Renekton. <laughs> it is, as well, a bit of a target ban. Uh, at the top laner here, Tauki. Okay, whatever. At the top laner, who decided to go Maokai instead. Maokai. Speaking of Maokai, that's a perfect segue here. Maokai, very strong champion. Um, has that very easy self chaining CC. Very strong form of engage here. And between that, 
and the Wukong. That should be plenty of engage, especially if Sivir has her ultimate up to just speed everybody up, get them in position. Um, because with with that, Maokai and Wukong are going to be able to gap close in with that Orianna ball on top of them. Orianna ultimate lands on multiple peoples, ideally the squishies, especially if you're going to have that Sivir speed up. It should be able to get them within range of the vulnerable uh, Zyra, of the vulnerable Jinx, of the vulnerable Ari. Ari especially because she's going to be wanna, hanging, wanting to hang out a bit more towards the front line because she is somebody who needs to get in close to do her full damage. So she tends to play a little bit more risky, which again puts more emphasis on, you know, how, is this mid laner going to be able to perform for Planter Technologies Prime on that champion? So we'll have to keep a definite eye on that and see how it works out. But I do want to just take one moment as well to admire the Jinx Zyra bot lane. Oh, oh it's so nice to know other people run that lane. <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen Zyra. I know Jinx has been coming back into flavor more and more as we get into uh, a slower tank meta. Uh, that tends to go a bit longer games. Jinx being the absolute late game hyper carry of all hyper carries in my opinion at least. Uh, she definitely has been flowing back into favor, but Zyra has such strong CC, and especially if you go more damagey Zyra build, uh, those plants will absolutely get 100% ignored during the team fights. So her ability to just throw out absurd amounts of DPS by just virtue of having those plants ignored uh, is certainly something that needs to be respected. And we'll see, we'll have to wait and see what build the Zyra ends up going with, if it's going to be a more utility traditional support build, or if it's going to be something a bit more damagey, since they do have so much CC already with the Zyra, with the Scion ultimate, with the Charm, with the Sejuani ultimate, and the Sejuani knockup, or displacement rather. Uh, but it looks like we are having a bit of what was considered a possible invade here, but it looks like both teams are going to think better of it here. Perhaps just... Uh, setting up to deal with an invade on both sides should it occur, but with that Maokai Sapling's uh, line of scrimmage help, helping to set that up here uh, with the initial wards thrown down, it looks like everything's going to be A-OK -okay here. Uh, Scion is opting to go with that Crystalline Flask, so uh, full sustained start from both top laners here. I'm not expecting to see uh, anything <laughs> too exciting in that top lane going down. Um, depending on some early trades that may go back and forth here, we may see some action in the top lane with the junglers going up there early to try and make something happen. Uh, but unless if there's a lot of trades going down early, there's going to be so much sustain in that top lane, I don't expect to see any kill pressure in that lane for a significant period of time. Even once they hit 6, of course, Scion having so much trouble landing that ultimate, uh, traditionally, is going to be not the hugest power spike at 6, <laughs> and Malkai doesn't really have the most offensive ultimate either. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. We're going to see some strong leashes going into these junglers here from the good guy bot lanes. Uh, as Sejuani is going to start off with that, those Krugs as Wukong starts off with the ground. We do have, uh, in this patch, of course, some minor nerfs to the Gromp. Well, significant, I would actually say. Nerfs to the Gromp buff. Uh, with Wukong being the choice here, it's not going to be too important to him too early on in the game, but uh, we will have to keep an eye out for him to be smiting other camps over the Gromp as the game goes on here, because they're probably going to provide a little bit more utility for him. Do want to take a moment to know too while we were focused on the spot lane that Maokai did start uh, with the camp. Some great poke there from the plants, of course. <laughs> Being an absolute jerk there, placing the camp right or the plant right in the edge of that bush in the bot lane is Zyra to zone people off. Fantastic placement there, but uh, like I was saying, Maokai got the early level two from starting that Razor Beaks camp. Uh, then went back to buy up an extra ward there for the laning phase, so Maokai is going to be a bit an advantage in that top lane there. Though with those trinkets up, uh, we'll see how safe they're going to be uh, with just those wards being able to be thrown out. Maokai is pinging out the ward timing there, so they might look to 
try and abuse that ward timing as soon as that trinket expires, but we'll have to wait and see on that for now. Okay, it's pushed up a little bit. We do see Wukong hanging out in the area looking to take that scuttle crab. And possibly as that ward times out, head up, but we'll see where he ends up heading here. Great charm there by Ari. Even with the command protect, they're not able to block out nearly enough of the damage there to uh, survive that trade effectively. Fantastic shot there by the Ari to get quite a bit of damage now onto that Oriana. Oriana now uh, already chugging through those last, last health pots. Running a little low on me as well. Great poke there from the plant, so Silver going to be content to farm those up as much as she can. But already we see a huge lead growing in that bottom lane from the zoning that uh, Zyra has been able to provide poking people off using those plants to harass as much as possible to just try and conserve their HP in the bottom lane uh, and deal with farming under turret. They have already fallen into a 7 uh, creep ducks in here but just like we were saying earlier there's the Wukong coming into that top lane early and just like that that will be first blood going on to that Wukong. Definitely <laughs> the person you're content to have that first blood on is Wukong is going to want to uh, get some good uh, items, leads here, and create a lot of opportunities for other lanes with his uh, early damage abilities. You see him opting to go for the Trailblazer here. Has some good trading uh, of the poke back and forth here for both sides in that bottom line. Again, able to farm up those uh, plants is Sivir, but unfortunately even with those plants artificially boosting her CS, she is still down by quite a bit. Hopefully she'll be able to farm up a lot of this minion uh, wave here at the turret, but actually she misses almost all of it, so now a 10 CS lead here as the two waves come in for the blue side in this bottom lane. Definitely going to be something that needs Wukong's attention down here. They are very frequently poked out. Gosh, so much damage coming out from that Zyra Q and the follow-up damage from the plant. Wukong going to be spotting out that Sejuani who's looking to take the Scuttle Crab and hang out in the bottom lane to try and snowball that lead even further. But Wukong in pursuit. <laughs> we'll see Jinx looking to go down there. Going to fend off the Wukong and Sejuani. Both junglers have been spotted out from both sides right now. You see some more poke damage again coming out. Silver so doing her best to farm out those plants that you just have to do, but taking so much damage on the back end of it. So you see the six coming first for that uh, Scion. And uh, six is available as well. Wukong coming here doesn't have his ultimate, and the spirit rush already being used by Ari is going to mean that she's able to just spirit rush on out of there. So Wukong, unfortunately, not really forcing the ultimate, but does prevent anything from coming of it. So a very timely gank there to make sure that Oriana is safe as that uh, initial charm could have spelt a kill in that mid lane, but luckily for her she's able to rely on that Wukong to have her back, but hold that thought because here in the bottom lane, the beautiful heal coming out from Sivir just in the nick of time to save her life. Fantastic play there. Just able to dodge that last little bit of damage from the final Jinx rocket there, but unfortunately that will mean she has to go back right as some minions crash into there. There is a cannon wave coming down now, so hopefully that'll buy her a little bit of time to head on back, but looking back to that mid lane momentarily here, we do see Ari already with that needlessly large rod here while Oriana opting to just go for another Doran's Ring, some boots, and a chalice for a little bit of uh, sustain for that damage and the uh, of mana regen as well. We're going to see Sion actually does land that ultimate there, and with the Sejuani ultimate as well, that's going to be a lot of damage, but Maokai, with that ultimate turned on for himself, so tanky. Going to be able to just walk away. You got a question uh, in that top lane with Maokai's ultimate still having plenty of time to just tick away and running. Uh, how how much of a wise decision that was, <laughs> that pesky blue buff. How, how wise of a decision that was to blow both ultimates 
in the top lane on a Maokai who's able to just simply walk away, not even uh, having to uh, really risk too much uh, attention there being pulled from their own jungler to get away, but just able to walk away on his own merits. Whether or not that was really worth it, uh, when you could have spent that Sajwani ultimate right, instead in one of these bottom lanes or mid lanes, try and create a little bit more pressure there and snowball one of those lanes, perhaps uh, get this bottom lane even more out of control as we see the Jinx going deep there. Wukong coming in with that gap close. The Zyra is going to be taken quite low and there she goes. Her passive is up there. Let's see if she can make anything other. Jinx forced to flash heal and with the last shot of the turn, no, the heal is going to be coming out from Nami. So she's going to be, or Wukong rather, is going to be just fine. Again, beautiful charms coming in from that Ari there. I think that's definitely answered the concerns we had going into this about whether or not he uh, has the mechanical prowess to perform on that champion. Clearly has been shown to do so. But again, fantastic play there by the Ari. Unfortunately, or excuse me, by the Nami to save that Wukong from that last turret shot. Unfortunately, uh, all those resources in the bottom lane were not able to resort in a kill, but they did shove that Jinx finally out of lane give that Sivir Nami a bit more breathing room. Although Jinx going to be able to purchase a VF sword and it looks like she's waiting on another item here. Yes, there she is. She's getting her boots on and then going to head on back down the lane. So that will be a very distinct item advantage in this bottom lane for the blue side. As we see the sm smacking back and forth of the face here is here in the top lane. <laughs> Not too much action going to happen here, though, even with that Scion. Fairly low right now, still does have, uh, I believe actually he is out of class charges, but he still does have a health pot, so he's going to be just fine. But Wukong, looking to invade this blue buff here, should be able to take it uncontested as nobody is uh, positioning properly, especially with the Maokai and Oriana. Both of them are actually going to look to steal that blue buff, and no, they are going to put it on Wukong. Leave the last little camp there to deny and it looks like Ari's getting an idea of what's going on. She did spot out the Wukong, so she might have an idea that that blue buff is gone. So Zwani's going to spot out the pink ward here and be able to clear that out no problem. Is Wukong lingering about, looking to try and create a play here. And instead going to opt to just farm out those camps as Zwani. Becomes a very... It uh, informs a very sad Ori that her blue buff was in fact countered by the way as suspected here. So I'm gonna reveal himself uh, to try and uh, bait out that there's no jungler in that direct area, but unfortunately there was a pink ward in this tribe, so Oriana coming down is gonna be spotted out as well. And they do manage to actually defend that pink ward, but. The more important story is, in the meantime, Wukong starting off this dragon here. And with the Orion and Sivir, I mean, they are going to know this is going down. Zyra perhaps might attempt a last minute seal there. She threw down the plant to try and get something set up, but unfortunately, not going to be enough here. As Ari actually going to spirit rush in, into a ultimate there from the Oriana. And Sejuani and uh, Ari kind of... Out alone there in the four members, but that's a beautiful ultimate from Sejuani. Gonna force the flash away. But here comes Wu Kong with that ultimate himself, throwing him quite a bit of CC. And the exhaust gonna just barely keep it him alive. Zyra earning the kill there by far, as the Sivir is picked up as well from that REQ. Beautiful charm there as well. Great, great Zyra snare there on the Sivir, but also fantastic holding of the exhaust and throwing it down right as Wukong was getting deep enough to bring that Sejuani within kill range and Sejuani just barely making it out despite that last auto attack taken so low the exhaust there definitely saving her life beautiful Zyra play there Zyra again definitely earning herself a kill in that exchange gonna be able to go back and uh, make some purchases there. Thinking about the Ruby Sidestone, but actually gonna think better of it here. Gonna s actually opt to go for an Amp Tomb here. Very interested to see what she decides to build that out of. It could be, uh, like we were talking about earlier, a bit more damage Zyra build here to bring out a lot of uh, 
GPS during the fights with those plants, but we'll see what she opts to go for here. As everybody looks to head on back to their lanes now after that exchange. That was the dragon though, going over to the red side initially. So first dragon of the game is secured by this NVIDIA team here. And we'll see what they'll be able to do if they can maintain that dragon control. To get to an early three dragons here. That and the silver ultimate on top of it is going to be absurd amounts of mobility for this team. Especially if Oriana really wants to go on and throw down that command dissonance there as well. Going to be able to absolutely outposition this blue side team without anything they can do about it. But we'll see if they can actually maintain that level of dragon control as they go into this. Right now the uh, gold lead is very insignificant right now in the hundred amount <laughs> essentially so essentially dead heat here though we do see it looking at the lanes there are distinct advantages in the lanes of course 10 cs in the bot lane for the blue side uh nearly 20 cs here in the top lane for this maokai uh but uh, 15 cs in the mid lane as well so each lane with a distinct advantage maokai uh being the uh, major advantage here for the red side. Certainly not going to be the most important uh, lane to have that CS advantage in. So I uh, would have to give that a little bit in favor of the blue team because Maokai certainly going to enjoy having an early rod completed as quickly as possible from that gold. But Maokai definitely more about scaling with those levels here. And actually going to turn on the ultimate to try and get some extra damage onto that Scion. He will be able to do so. But Scion is going to go through those blast charges and chug those health pots and he's going to be just fine here. Taking quite a bit of damage from the minions though, so... Right as I say that, perhaps uh, I might want to think twice before I commit to that. <laughs> no, it looks like he will be fine though, of course he does still have that teleport, so if he really gets in any trouble there, he'll be able to back right away and not miss too much CS uh, as he can teleport right back into that top lane and with the dragon uh, still having a, a significant amount of time before it respawns here. He shouldn't have to worry too much about uh, losing that teleport for an, a near objective here. Okay, doing some good work with those saplings. Zoning him off of a couple CS here. So there's one good spawning out on that ward. Doing her best to clear out that jungle. Regain control. Another! Fantastic charm by this REO. Unfortunately, the Oriana ultimate does miss there. That's going to be a painful cooldown to have to wait through now. And that might be the signal for this blue side to start forcing their hands for a bit of a team fight situation coming up here. It looks like Ari is going to go for the kill. Beautiful sidestep there by the Oriana, knowing that charm was coming. Going to be able to sidestep that away. I believe that's the first missed charm we've seen all game. So, beautiful prediction there by Oriana. Able to just calmly sidestep. Because, of course, Blue Buff not able to sidestep those charms quite as effectively here. Going to go down to that Ori. Put that Blue Buff in the mid lane. Of course, we do have that Luden's Echo completed now for the Ori. Got herself a little bit of extra mana regen as well with that Fairy Charm. Perhaps looking to go into a, a chalice herself. A charm just falling a little short of that Oriana here. As unfortunately Oriana does not have that chalice complete yet. Maokai looking to be a pest here. Trying to take away um, some deep vision here in that uh, area for the next blue buff spawn. But unfortunately it was already given away to that Ari. So, he will just be forced out of their jungle here, and he's going to make it back to lane without too much CS being missed there, so not too much of a concern for him. As you see, spawning out this pink board here, as the dragon is now alive. Sion did hold that teleport this whole time. Opting to walk back to lane instead, so we'll see if Sion going to be able to use that teleport in. Unfortunately, there's no real ward coverage here. Wukong going to be able to secure the Scuttlecrab for the red side. 
and Jinx is shoving those minions up to that turret as quickly as she can to try and force Sivir and Nami back to this lane to answer, and she will successfully do so, but with Ari recalling right now, that could mean an opportunity here for the red side, but with so many wards down by the blue side, they are actually looking to back away here. Oriana's stepping forward to try and get some even uh, deeper ward coverage, and now we're starting to see this map around Dragon lit up like a light bright by this red team here. It's going to have a lot of vision going into that. That will be the turret going down from Jinx, who did shove those minions in. And unfortunately, Sivernami not quite able to answer that power. Jinx left alone a little bit too long in that bottom lane. And of course, being that she's Jinx, that turret's not going to last too long with her. <laughs> so... Fantastic charm again by this Ari. Even with that Athene's now completed with that extra resistance, still taking quite a bit of damage is Oriana. She's gonna be able to chug through or uh, munch on some biscuits here and be just fine. But with this dragon coming up here from this position, I mean we can only think that this is gonna be some significant damage on the bull sides here as we saw. Of course, Oriana landing some damage back there, trying to answer back onto Ari here. Everybody dancing around. That is a beautiful catch, though, by Oriana. Does ultimate her into the turret, but that's not going to be enough because Sejuani able to lock her down. And there's the Wukong ultimate actually going to flash to make sure he lands a CC onto the other uh, members of the team, but unfortunately, there's nobody there to follow it up, so he's not going to be able to get much for that ultimate and flash. Two very critical cooldowns. Now onto that Wukong. And that will be another kill going over to this blue side here. And with Oriana down, with her ultimate not available, that could spell the dragon, but it looks like they're actually going to just back away with all, all of blue side recalling. Beautiful game sense from this red team to see that after they lost that fight there, all of blue was recalling to spend that gold, and without any vision down, they're going to be able to secure that red dra or that second dragon for the red side uncontested here. And that will be the mid lane turret going down as well. After those minions shoved up so many times here in this middle lane from that Ari, Zara able to push him in one final time to finish that off. So with two turrets now down for this blue side here, that's creating a bit of a global gold advantage here right now that we see in the 3k gold lead. Mostly coming from those turrets as these lanes have stayed fairly stable here. The leads haven't really decreased or increased too much. They've sort of maintained since we last checked them in though. Uh, very significantly here. Both ADCs have their infinity edge complete right now. So no huge item advantage as far as that bot lane is concerned. Perhaps a little bit better mobility onto that Jinx with her tier 2 boots completed here. Ari, with that Luden's Echo, looking to go into the uh, Morella Nomicon next. A good choice there um, if the Sivir does uh, opt to go for some life skill, which is fairly uh, an easy assumption to make there. It looks like that's not going to be a top lane turret coming out. Looking to complete the outer turret set is this blue team, but unfortunately, with three members roaming up here to answer, that's not going to be enough damage. Three on three, simply not enough siege potential here. So we're getting a good of chunk of poke down on that. Excuse me, on that Zyra in the bottom lane, chunking her out quite a bit there. The Sion looking to bully that map high away. With Ari still hanging around the top lane. Content to let this Oriana push that uh, mid lane back towards safety there, towards the turret, towards the uh, gankable zone there, and she will be making it back fairly easily. Where needed the Jinx is caught out here. 
The Oriana Ball not really in a good position for an ultimate there, but regardless, that will spell doom for the Zyra. Zyra waiting, and the Oriana Ultimate does end up missing, and Jinx couldn't get excited here. But that will be Wukong gap closing onto that Ori, and that will be a double kill for Jinx. The server are gonna be able to make it out of there with her life intact. But now that will be the blue side trying to shove up this top lane here. Great teleport timing from that Scion to get involved in the fight here. Unfortunately, Maokai opting not to uh, teleport as well. Gonna instead try and answer with a top lane turret. But now with the inner middle in er, in inner middle turret taken down. Uh, perhaps a far more critical turret being lost here by this red side, though they will answer with their first turret of the game in that top lane turret. And now, of course, with that top wave pushing here, a good back timing for that Maokai, but his team definitely needed him in that team fight there. Unfortunately, going to create a little bit of a further lead here, and those little leads starting to chip away at those advantages that were built up by this red side by having that early dragon control. I mean, we've seen so many times, uh, so many games rather, that the dragons end up going over to one side early on, but it ends up not meaning a gosh darn thing because the other side was picking up kills all, the, all along the way, and when that critical third dragon comes up and team fights break out, all of a sudden, one side is able to absolutely control the dragon from there on out, and those early two dragons don't result in too much. But we'll see what happens to Zyra. Going way deep there to try and clear out a pink ward, and she is going to still be caught out. She does have that flash. No, she does not, and she will be going down. Unfortunately, a little deep there, getting a little greedy, trying to throw down a deep ward, but also... Uh, clear out a pink ward that she's happened to stumble upon there, and it will cost her her life. Good response there from this red side to be able to spot that out and act uh, accordingly as quickly as possible. With the wave clear, of course, from this Ari and this Jinx, so it's going to be very hard to siege this up, and they are going to have to rotate back up top as there is a large wave of Scion getting the word from his team that they have head up in that direction. I believe that was Ari stealing away the Scuttle Crab, and yes it was, that will be a speed shine for the blue side. Great key from Ari. Again, definitely uh, answering any concerns we had going into this game. That Ari definitely uh, very strong on a mechanical level here. Performing very well. And we do see, with that Luna's Echo, Morella Namicon completed, she is far and away ahead of this Oriana now, who simply has an Athenes and a Blasting Wand to go off of. Uh, not even able yet to uh, get another needlessly large rod, or her first of the game, rather. As we see Jinx almost with her Bloodthirster completed. Just a little bit off right there. A uh, little, little minor gold. I'm sure she'll be able to go back here fairly soon and pick that up. The Wukong diving in there, and that is an ultimate. Unfortunately, only lands onto the two tanks up. Not quite able to land on that Zyra, though. Wukong is doing everything he can. The Jinx Rocket comes in from deep. Scion gonna be able to make it out with his life. No, he will go down. And he will try and create a little extra damage onto these squishy targets. Wukong gonna realize he was uh, in too deep there and just go all in at the last second. But unfortunately, that's going to be two turnaround kills for the blue side. And all of a sudden, this team fight looking to have changed very severely. But beautiful Q W from the Oriana there. Able to get a final kill onto that Ari right before she goes down. Making it overall a 3 for 2 in favor of the blue side. But definitely salvaged there after it started to go wrong by the red side there. To try and keep it as even as possible. And get some critical gold onto the people they need it. However, that will mean this is the first dragon of the game uncontestably going to this blue side here. As Jinx is going to look to go a little deep herself. Do <laughs> get revenge for the Zyra and there goes down the pink ward. So 
So very critically, we want to uh, point out here for sure that that Jinx 3-0-5 right now with that Bloodthirster Infinity Edge completed here. She, of course, is going to just get better and better as we go deeper and deeper into this game here. So having those kills onto her, having that kill participation in 100% of the kills for her team is going to absolutely be critical for her uh, team on the blue side here. Jinx is going to absolutely be able to carry. As we've seen in these past team fights, she knows just exactly how to sit back Wait, stay in auto range, turn that Q on, get excited, get the damage down when she needs to. So I have full confidence here in this Jinx to perform exactly as she needs to to carry this game. Or the Sivir, of course, definitely nothing to snub your nose at here. As she do, as she has 2, 1, and 4 herself, quite a bit of damage is going to be coming out from her as well. Now Oriana, of course, critically... Does not have that death cap completed yet. Just has the ingredients here all bought up, but still waiting on that last bit of gold to be able to finish up that death cap. Whereas Ari almost has her, uh, uh, not void staff, her. Gosh darn it. Oh! Such noob! Why don't I know what that's called? Oh my goodness. The. Oh wow. Well, for shame, for casting shame that I cannot remember what that item is called here. Hopefully she'll complete that soon and be able to get that aura of magic resist reduction in. But that's going to be Ari looking to try and create some power here. Unfortunately, the Sejuani did back off. But with that ultimate now down and the charm pulling him out of the turret, that will be a kill onto that Maokai. The kill credit going over to Sejuani there. And overall, that is another kill going over to this blue side. And red side not able to answer with any objectives here. Oriana doing her best to shove that minion wave in to create pressure on this middle lane outer turret. But not going to be enough as Ari will get there in time with that Luden's Echo tier 2 boots completed. She's of course going to be able to uh, get back to where she needs to be on the map very quickly here. Jinx laying down the harass with that zap. And that will be the top lane outer turret. Now all outer turrets down for this red side here. And Ari catching out that Oriana again. She's gonna spirit rush. And that will be an Oriana ultimate to trade back. But unfortunately she did have to also burn her flash to get out of there. As Ari could have continued to pursue that. And Oriana definitely didn't want any part of that there. Are you gonna wisely back away to her turret as these uh, red side members do come in and they will realize that there was a ward there spotting them out. They'll clear it out here. Now Oriana, with that death cap complete here, gonna be able to, and let's take a minute, the Abyssal Scepter. There we go. Oh gosh, my brain. Can you guys tell I don't play mid lane very often? <laughs> um, I actually have been playing mid lane quite a bit, but I do not play mid lane as I build a Bissell. Um, <laughs> oddly enough, a Moon is the most frequent champion I build that on. Anyways, back to the game here. <laughs> Oriana, with that uh, death cap completed now, gonna be able to throw that down onto the Maokai, onto the Wukong, and get some very critical ultimates here. Those could easily, easily turn the tides of this game back towards this red side here. That gold advantage is of course on the blue side of uh, the map right now. It's about a 4k gold lead, 4.5k gold lead. But that can easily be turned around by a three or four man Oriana ultimate here. And she certainly has the tools to do it with that silver ultimate, with the gap close from Wukong and Maokai, with the uh, CC from the Tsunami here. Gonna definitely be able to create something here as we do see this red side setting up as much as they can for this dragon. Will they spawning in one minute? Uh, looks like. I actually think that red side will end up pushing in the top lane there. It's going to be very close, nearly frozen here, but I think it's going to just barely start pushing in favor of that red side. So uh, they will have to respond to this blue side bot lane push of the minions here. It looks like 
Wukong already cheating over to that side of the map to try and do so as we see the pings coming out here. So they are going to have to back away with that Wukong backing off, which will give the blue side time to sweep out that Dragon Pit, throw down some wards of their own. But caught out a little bit, going to throw down her ultimate to try and engage her, and that is the Jinx ultimate as well, but the Spirit Rush from... Not going to matter. Actually, beautiful bubble there onto those three members. Ari almost picking up a kill onto that Sivir, but not going to be able to do so. The Oriana is caught out way too deep. Beautiful ultimate there. The Ignite taking away onto Jinx, but I do not think it'll be enough. No, just barely the last tick of Ignite. Not going to get that 20 HP. Oh, poor Oriana. I hope she doesn't know. I hope she doesn't know that that was 20 HP away from that huge shutdown onto Jinx. Stop that insane 305 Jinx from going into hyper carry mode here, but unfortunately that's not going to be the case, and that will be the second dragon for this blue side, evening up that dragon score, two dragons apiece, and just like that, red side starting to lose control of this game here as that is a 5k gold lead and no dragon advantage at all for them. Gonna be a little rough here. Of course, Maokai, with that Rod of Ages fully stacked here, gonna be in full tank mode as he looks to get that Frozen Heart completed as well. He can get into those front lines if he can tank up that bit of damage here. I mean, Wukong, certainly not quite as tanky as him yet, but with that, uh, with those resistances starting to be built here, with that raw HP of the Giant's Belt, he is going to be able to tank up quite a bit of damage if he can get in position here. And he will spot out that there is that blue buff up, but unfortunately for him, there is a pink ward right in the vicinity, so that ward going to be immediately cleared out by Ari here. Looks like as Ari takes that blue buff, they're going to just rotate into this middle lane looking to try and pick up a catch onto that Jinx but unfortunately she's going to back away and it looks like the rest of the members will be there in time to prevent this middle lane turret from going down as Nami is able to pick up a pink ward for her troubles during that time and Simon is going to teleport down to the bot lane with Sivir but hold on there is a lot of action going down right now uh, Ari Despite the teleport, Sion not able to save that turret in the bottom lane. Very unfortunate for the blue side here. It's going to be some very critical global gold going over here. And Ari was not able to pick up a kill in that mid lane, though it did force Oriana to go back here. And of course, with those four items completed, with the Void Staff on top of the uh, Abyssal Scepter, all that MR is going to be absolutely shredded away here. And... Ari looking to do near true damage levels of power with that uh, Luden's Echo completed. Once she throws a death cap on top of all of that, it's going to become this red side's worst nightmare. Though, hold that thought, we do have the Sivir ultimate coming up, and that is a great ultimate from the Zyra to answer. Slow everybody down, and that will be Zyra going down in the end. The Jinx Rock and not able to get that kill, but the final plan getting the last hit. Beautiful kill there onto that. Uh, uh, excuse me, onto that Oriana. As that actually is gonna be the charm not landing, unfortunately, no ace there, but beautiful ultimate from that Scion to get that follow up engage start off. We gotta watch that one more time. I hope you guys will indulge me in going back because that was such a huge turnaround fight here after that engagement from the red side. So let's pay attention here to the Zyra who does get this started off here. There's the ultimate, and both speed ups coming in. They look to get onto Jinx, but Zyra steps forward to throw down that ultimate, and it does create a lot of time when that Sivir is not auto attacking. And watch the hero plant here. Ba boom! <laughs> Between that and the minions. And then, of course, Sion ulting in as soon as he knew he was needed. Able to connect on that Ari with the speed up from on the Jinx, with the spear rushes from the Ari. That's gonna be, unfortunately, the, again, that last charm not able to land, but that's gonna be. What started off to look really bad for this blue side is going to end up being a 1 for 4 in their favor. And that will be the middle lane inhibitor going down. I'd be very shocked if this Wukong was able to do anything about this here. He's going to have hard enough time fending them off if they chose to go for 
uh, the Nexus turret, so they are going to opt to go back here for this uh, inner turret in the top lane, making use of that wave that was already pushing. And unfortunately for this red side, all waves are pushing in here. They have to go up to try and defend this, uh, but absolutely just going to miss out on all that CS in the bottom lane. So we're going to be getting there much later than Wukong could, and Wukong, of course, not able to defend this top lane in her turret. So that will be 6-2 to two as far as the turret leads are concerned, but overall, in kills, 14-8, to eight. blue side definitely hitting their stride here. Now that Jinx has that, uh, uh, Jesus, last whisper, there we go. My brain this morning, whoa, sorry guys, me and item names are not working out this morning. But now that she has that last whisper completed, that's going to be a lot of damage actually going down onto this Navi. He's forced to ultimate just to get away here. And that Jinx ultimate just barely not going to be enough damage. Thankfully the locket being popped from Nami going to give her a little bit of extra health there to sustain through that damage. That will be Nami already forced away. And with her so low, that's going to be a 4v5 if they want to try and contest here. But with Super Minion streaming up the middle lane, and I, I mean, Zyra just being a pest with those plants, zoning people away. Ari able to get so much damage already down. The Nami, or the Zyra ultimate, not going to land there. But that is the kill there. Maokai looking to try and be a hero. Will get the kill on the Zyra, but that will be the Baron going over. And the final plant kill, I do believe that was. Or, no, it was probably the passive from Zyra. Going to be picking up the kill there. So overall, a 2 for 3 in favor of this blue side here. Also picking up the Baron. And that's got to be it for this game here. A near 10k gold lead with that Baron buff. They're going to be able to just push up this top wave. This top wave. Escort these minions through the top lane here. Pick up that turret. Unfortunately, with those super minions coming in, I don't believe... But they're going to be able to do anything to answer this. With Jinx, of course, the turret destroyer she is, being able to just sit way back behind those tanks. And with that ultimate from Sejuani, they're actually going to look to get these kills. Unfortunately, Sivir made it out alive there. A little miscalculation on how much damage that Jinx uh, uh, Q would do. And unfortunately, the Super Mega Death Rocket not going to be able to land on the Sivir there. Just barely coasting by her. Excuse me, but they will not be able to finish off the game here. They will just settle for taking that top lane inhibitor, getting a little extra uh, gold from those kills, and they'll head on down to that bot lane to clear it out as they rotate up towards the dragon pit area here. Jinx going to pick up that red buff for herself. Nom, or excuse me, uh, Orianna getting that uh, blue pot there to get herself all powered up here in what might be the final stand here as they try and get some semblance of control back over this dragon area. They're gonna start it off here, try and get that dragon into a favorable position for them. They're gonna force this back away. That is some great damage coming down from this red side. Oriana putting in a lot of work onto some squishier targets so she will up going, end up going down, but now that's a two for two. Jinx being excited, gets the crit, and that will be a three for two. No dragging completed. Oh, and Jinx with a super mega death rocket and the zap landing. Will she go under the turret? Yes, she will. That's another crit, and that's the triple kill for Jinx, the ace for this red side here with super minions in the base. Scion wailing away. Those death timers are way too long. That's absolutely going to be the game here. GG going over to Palantir's Technologies Prime. The GG's coming out in chat here from both sides. And wow, that Jinx absolutely showing up huge for her team. 7 0 and 11 in the final count, though, of course, Ari seemed to be the story of that game throughout uh, the main chunk of the game, creating such a huge advantage for herself. Always seemed to be ahead of that Oriana. Unfortunately for the red side, for this NVIDIA team, not able to deal with that Ari, simply snowballed out of control. So much precision on those charms. Again, we saw very few charms miss that game. Almost always directly on point here, and it reflects, again, 
we went into this game with some questions about the mechanics of whether or not Pax Noctum would be able to perform on this champion. Highest CS in the game, 319. I, I'm so impressed that absolutely, and this was when, remember, at the start of this game, we had Redside ban out three target bans against Pax Noxum to try and push him off of his comfort champions, off of the champions we know he can perform on in that mid lane. And what does he do? He pulls out another champion, goes 8, 2, and 9, highest CS in the game, always, almost always throughout the game. Had an item advantage as we see lots of tears for this Falcat. I didn't notice that till just now. Uh, but almost always had an item advantage on his laning opponent and was not given, there was no answer to him throughout the game. Certainly there were some great plays from this red side. And in that final battle, uh, or one of the final battles, they were able to get that Wombo combo down from the Orianna. And on top of that, Wukong able to uh, annihilate two targets right at the outset of the fight. But it was simply too little too late at that point in the game. The control was lost. There were super minions streaming into the base. And that's going to be the game going over to this blue side here. As we look again, that Ari absolutely showing up so strong here. By far highest damage in the game. I don't even have to look at all of Red Side to know that to be true. I mean almost double that of her laning opponent. Nearly more than two of any of her even teammates combined here. Wow, I'm just so so thoroughly impressed by that Ari, and I don't know how people are going to deal with this team going forward. I mean, if you're up against Planter Technologies Prime in the next round of the playoffs in the best in the uh, top sixteen next week I don't know what you do. Do you just ignore that mid laner, let Pax get whoever he wants and try and focus out one of the other lanes, perhaps try and take off the ADC from their comfort picks, try and ban out the jungler? I don't know what you do. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I, that being said, I mean, there's certainly, again, lots of power being demonstrated by this Jinx. She certainly did not feel to have any uh, trough in the early game like we know she does have being the late game hyper carry she is she was not punished in the early game and uh, that might be something that other teams look at going forward trying to ban out that jinx to try and disrupt something because if you can perform early game on a hyper carry I mean you're gonna absolutely be a nightmare for his uh, for the enemy team there so in the end, though, of course, that is the game going over to Planter Technologies Prime, who will be advancing into the next round of the playoffs into the top 16. So congratulations to them. And uh, if you want to stay tuned for any of the uh, upcoming games, I will be casting some more games later on uh, in the afternoon here uh, on this channel. You can always, of course, stay tuned to AfterHoursGaming.tv. They will have all the matches posted there. Uh, all the schedules posted there if you want to see what other teams are making it past this round of the playoffs here and what matches are coming up next week as well to stay tuned for your favorite teams. And of course, like I said, you can always stay tuned to this channel as well. I will be uploading uh, all the uh, games I cast after casted here. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you guys next time.